the but the thing that was fascinating to me was the contrast between her excerpt mm -hmm. and reading Shattered. And Philip Raines, I think it was, came in and spent hours and hours and hours doing moot debates, being Trump, deliberately doing things like walking into her space, stalking her, being as aggressive as possible so that she would be prepared and was comfortable going into these settings. So, so yes, I realize that that's what we're saying now, but what's really interesting to me is I don't know that anybody actually cares how she feels about Trump. What they care about is what do you think about the country? What do you think about policy? What what was the purpose of your campaign and the the central message that we never understood what it was that you were going to do for the country as well as perhaps the campaign would have wished they had been able to articulate this and that would be a more compelling thing for her to write about I think than what she feels about Trump because honestly you know, we know that her skin crawled, but but a lot of people's skin crawled thinking about Bill and Hillary's relationship with a lot of things. So, so creepiness of a feeling is not really what's going to drive but, book sales. But Aaron, <laughs> did, I, Aaron, I, but it, like everything that we've heard so far from Hillary Clinton after the election loss commentary that she's made in public, it exemplifies and illustrates why she lost. She was calculating, and people couldn't figure out who she really was because she, you know, she's got hot sauce in her purse one moment. She, you know, she right. shape shifts, if you will. Right. What I was thinking when I heard that excerpt was, this is the plight of the modern career woman. There are men in business, and women are, you know, breaking through those glass ceilings, and that's a topic that every woman wants to talk about. We all have our shared experience, but she is so hard to relate to, and to sort of get the women to draw into her. So it's very, very difficult to connect with her because she didn't have a real identity. And that's what we just see more and more of. Instead of her becoming relatable and a real person, she just, as I said earlier, seems very robotic. Well, Zach, and I think that's a big part of why she well, didn't win. Zach, her identity is that she's a political animal. That's her identity. Well, I mean, we'll, 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 sir, I mean certainly that's, that's, part, that's part of her identity. I mean, she also, I mean, she is, she is a, she's a public figure. And I think that we, uh, think of think of it, her in those terms, in large part because she is a woman, and it is you know fairly fairly rare um, in in you know what's political interesting, history. Though, you hear if you talk privately with uh, Democrat Democratic fundraisers, even um, leaders in the party, they when they talk about who they're going to run in uh, coming up on three years, mm -hmm. you you hear female names. You don't really hear them planning to run a man, which I find. Interesting. I, well, I think there. I think there are plenty of men in the mix. However, I, I do think what you're what you're noting is exactly right. There are a lot more women who, who are in the mix, and and that is in large part because of the glass ceiling that Hillary Clinton broke. You know, like her or, or or not, it is now not a weird thing for a woman to run for president of the United States, Democrat or Republican, or it, and that is objectively a good thing. Well, it's because they think they have a better shot with a woman running against Trump and coming up on three years. We all remember Clinton's election party at the Javits Center. I drove by it actually as the crowds were pouring out. There were so many disappointed faces. I saw them uh, driving up. I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I saw them driving up 10th Avenue and it seems like Secretary Clinton really felt that disappointment. Listen to this. Every day that I was a candidate for president, I knew that millions of people were counting on me and I couldn't bear the idea of letting them down. But I did. I couldn't get the job done. Heather, she, I'm still shocked to this day that she didn't step up and speak to her supporters in, in the Javits Center that night. Because again, if you run on this, I'm a strong woman, that was the very moment as, you know, if, if she's going, that she ran as a feminist, that's the very moment where she fell down on that promise to women. I think it was surprising to many of us that she didn't, but my understanding, and Zach can obviously speak to this from personal knowledge far <laughs> better than I as an outside observer, I think the first thing that was going on was that there had to be this just sort of huge psychological confusion because mm -hmm. everyone was so convinced that she was going to win. Uh, the second thing was big dif differences about what she should say and whether they should contest. Zach, you got five seconds. I mean, uh, yeah, it was a it was a huge shock, but let's remember that she spoke uh, early the, uh, the next morning, and and it was it was it was a shock. She <laughs> pulled it together. Zach McCannis and Aaron Elmore. Thank you both. We'll be.